Hey guys, uh, today we're going to be talking about developing a strong lead or beginning for your narrative writing. Now remember, a strong lead or beginning is going to have three things to it. It's going to have a description of where the story is taking place. You're going to introduce us to the key characters, help us visualize them. And then you're going to have a hint or a clue as to what would later become a problem or an issue for one of those main characters you've introduced us to. Now, when you start your stories, though, you got to think of an interesting way to hook your audience. And we're going to go over some options on how you can do that. Now, the first option that we have is dialogue or where we see a character talking, uh, possibly to another character or to the reader. Let's look at an example. Wake up, my mom shouted up the stairs. Notice that you've got quotation marks there around the wake up part and then you're still describing what's going on. Now, this could be an interesting way to start it though because again, the reader wants to know what's going to happen next here with your mom getting you to wake up so suddenly. What's the main issue that's actually happening? Now again, you've got your quotation marks that's around where the person's speaking. You have your punctuation that you put at the end of it and then after you say who it is that's talking, you have your punctuation at the end after that. Now, the second option that you could use is onomatopoeia. Now, if you guys forgot what onomatopoeia is, that's where you use some sort of sound effect to start your story or some sort of noise that would get their attention. Uh, so you could start with the Big Bang, or if you look at this example here, an alarm clock that's going off. And it's interesting because the reader's going to want to know, well, what's causing this sudden sound to occur? Why is it making this actual noise? So you could also start your stories or your leads that way as well. Also, when you're doing this, you need to make sure that just like you did with um, people speaking, you have to make sure that you would use quotation marks if you're going to use onomatopoeia. So if you take a look there where it says bring, you can see that the quotations go around the sound, the punctuation's in there, and then you're saying what's making the sound, and then you finish that sentence with a punctuation mark. So that's the second option, using onomatopoeia to get your reader hooked in. Okay, so your third option is to start with something exciting or some sort of action that occurs that prompts the reader to be like, oh my gosh, well, wait, what's happening in this situation? And you probably see this in a lot of movies. Uh, it's very effective, but let's look at an example now. I leapt out of bed like I was on fire and I raced to my closet. Now, right away, as someone who's visualizing this, you're thinking, oh gosh, what, what, what's happened here? Did she oversleep? Um, is she worried that she's going to be late for school? Does she have an important event that she needs to get to? It's causing you to think, okay, why is this action so important? Okay, now for the fourth option for your hook. Be as descriptive as you can, giving us a snapshot of the environment or the setting of the story that you're writing about. Be as descriptive as you possibly can so that we can feel like we're in your shoes watching it as it's actually happening. Okay, so here's an example. My eyes slowly slid open. My room was bright with the morning light of the sun. Usually when I wake up, my room is black as night. Did I sleep in too late? Notice that this would be interesting because you're relating the scene to something everyone can picture. They can picture being in that room with you. Uh, waking up in a sudden way that they weren't expecting. So try to be as descriptive as you can. Now I'm going to show you how you can combine some of the options together. So let's take a look at how I did that in this paragraph I wrote. Wake up, Tim! My brother shouted. You have to start moving now! I leapt out of bed like I was on fire and quickly looked at my alarm clock. Oh no, I thought. It's already 7.30. How am I going to get to school on time? I raced over to my closet and pulled out a pair of jeans and a t-shirt. I tripped on my way to the bathroom as I was putting on my shirt and I hit my head on the door. Ignoring the pain, I quickly combed my hair and brushed my teeth. Tim! 
We have to go now. We're going to be late. I'm coming. I just have to grab my homework from last night. I scooped my stuff into my bag, grabbed my keys, and ran out to my car, hoping I had everything I needed for the day. Go ahead and take a look at what I did here. Okay, so the first strategy that I used that we had talked about to hook in the reader was I added some dialogue. So right off the bat, I've got someone talking to me to build that suspense of, of, oh gosh, why does he have to wake up so suddenly? And then I combined it with some action, where I have myself getting up very quickly and looking at that alarm clock because I'm concerned about it. Now, as we keep going, you get to uh, see the setting that I'm in, okay? And then at the very end here, we have the clue or the hint as to what my main problem is going to be that I'm facing when I run out to my car hoping I had everything I needed for the day. Remember, I left in a hurry. So that's my hint or clue to the reader about what the main issue is going to be in my story. Now you'll also notice that uh, the main character being myself, I am mentioned many times in this first uh, couple paragraphs, right? So notice I've covered all the things that I needed to, where I have my hook, which I used a combination of dialogue and action. I introduce the character to you that the story is gonna be about, which is me. I help you understand the setting that's happening and then the most important part, I give you that hint or clue as to what the main problem's going to be. Okay guys, now it's your turn. I want you to look over the writing that you did yesterday and I want you to make changes or revisions to your lead, which is also the beginning of your story. So you need to ask yourself, does your lead or the beginning of your story have an interesting hook that's gonna bring the reader in a description of where the story is taking place, which is also known as your setting, is the main character introduced? And then finally, is there a hint or a clue to the reader about what problem that character is going to have to solve later as the story continues? Okay, so once you have those questions answered, I want you to do a before and after picture on Seesaw. So take a picture of the writing you did yesterday and then the changed writing, I want another picture of as well, okay? And then after that, you're done for the day.